Oh, hello, Internet, and welcome once again, let me turn that down a little bit, to the free-to-play cast brought to you by MMOBomb.com, your home for all things free-to-play related. I'm your host, Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. Had a nice holiday week last week, so now we've got a ton of stuff to talk about, and Jason had to make sure we actually started recording the show today because we wanted to talk about paladins. Uh, <laughs> But that's all right. <laughs> Joining us this week, as he always does, Mr. Jason Winter. How are you, sir? A bomb to Paladins for delaying the start of this stream. <laughs> <laughs> Podcast recording, Have, whatever. Having a blast with it. I can't help it. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it with peoples. Also joining us, fresh off the holiday, Mr. Zach Sharps from Free to Play Weekly. What's up, sir? Uh, nothing much. Uh, Black Friday drained my entire wallet, though. It's it's pretty sad. Did you get anything good? I got a 4K TV. Oh, all right. Yeah. So you can watch those two DVDs that are out in 4K. You'd be and... surprised how good that upscaling <laughs> is. It's actually incredible. The overall pictures is better across the board, but See? now my GPU is a little uh, outdated. Don't tell me that. Damn it, because that's like my whole logic is, well, you know, there's not a lot available in it yet, and it's very expensive and bandwidthy if you try to do streaming. Because, like, like, obviously Netflix is looking at being able to do 4K here, but the bandwidth becomes an issue and all that. And the graphics card I bought, I was like, hmm, I'll be able to do 4K. It supports it. Why well, am I spending... if you have a 980, you're going to have a tough time at 30 FPS with most things at medium, so... I would hold off a little bit, at least till the next GPU architecture. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm in no hurry, you know, but because I, I was just, I just rationalized. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. There's not a lot available. Yeah. But now you're like, if you tell me the upscale, shit. <laughs> All right, let's get on to the news. Jason's got that shut up look on his face. <laughs> <laughs> All right, first up today, we'll let Jason talk about something he actually wants to talk about. Uh, we got two reviews for you in the last week and a half or so. We've done uh, Total War Arena, which Jason did. I did uh, Tree of Savior First Look, the English version. We got access to that and did a bomb live and a, an episode of the first look on there. There's a bunch of other first looks up. ELOA just went up. Uh, if you're familiar with the In Spirit Online first look, you definitely want to take a look at ELOA, the official version of that. Uh, but we're going to just do our usual reviews for two games. Jason, let's kick it off to you. Let's start with Total War Arena being our Total War f guru. First of all, do we have to click on it ELOA or can we just call it ELOA? ELOA. I just want to go with We don't call it T E R A. So I, I just. Right. Well, you're right, I guess, because that's the exiled realm of Aborea. Yeah, same sort of thing. Yeah. So. Elite Lord of Alliance, whatever. Anyway. Which, I don't want to call it Elite Lord of Alliance because that just, no, yeah, makes, yeah, that's just sounds terrible. But ELOA. Okay. So I, on I might a, name a daughter Eloa. That's pretty. This is Twa, Total War Arena. Not Twa. <laughs> <laughs> um, Thank God there's no tactics in the title. Oh, you didn't have to say it. It was an implied joke. Is it? Oh, my God. Okay. So, on Twa. <laughs> Uh, it, it feels like, to me, it feels like, because we haven't played, you know, a thousand hours or so of Total War games, it feels like really good, uh, like, simulation of the Total War experience while also trying to bring it to an online realm, make it sort of, uh, make it a little easier to handle for people, you know, slimming down some of the mechanics, you know, the fact that you only, can take, you only uh, take control of three units obviously makes it a lot simpler than the Total War battle where you have, like, you know, 20 or 40 or whatever. So having just a few units having just your kind of area usually to work on, you know, you'll progress along. I, I compare it a lot to World of Tanks, because it kind of feels like, like that in, not only in the progression, but also in the game plan, that you're going to have your guys, you know, it's a PvP, go capture their point, or they capture yours kind of thing, and you'll go to your area and, you know, support your allies and try to outflank people and so on, so it, it really does have kind of a feel like that in a lot of ways. But, you know, like I said, it feels like Total War in terms of, you know, you have stances which you would want to put your spearmen in if they got cavalry charging at them. You know, stuff like that. So, uh, I, I like it a lot. It's, it's quite a bit of fun. It's still in beta, definitely. Um, I talk about that in my video. A lot of a lot of things they can tweak, a lot of numbers they can uh, modify, I think. Um, they've just added, yesterday they added an update to add more to the barbarian uh, tech tree or the whatever the unit army tree or whatever it is. Uh, they added cavalry up to like rank eight, I think, which was bad because it was only rank three before. So you can progress further along in that. 
Um, three different races, Barbarian, Roman, and Greek, different commanders from each, each with their own like strengths or weaknesses. So, yeah, it's a pretty good experience. I like it quite a bit, and I'll uh, probably see myself playing it a lot, after, more so after it comes out of beta, because you know, between that and the one map that always just locks your camera at a low angle, I have a couple of those in my stream on my... <laughs> Just a pain in the ass. So I'm, I definitely want to see them fix that before I invest too heavily into it. Now, graphically, obviously, it is a, a little step back when you compare sure. it to the other Total Wars, but it's because they're you know going for an entirely different thing here, being the huge multiplayer. One of the things I saw a ton of comments about, and I want to ask you about, being a Total War buff, and I I have a few versions of it, and I play it casually, you know, the single player campaign stuff, but with Total War Arena and friendly fire what were your feelings there because a lot of people in the comments didn't necessarily like that i'm okay with that in like a single player experience where i'm in command of everything but did did that seem to be a problem or something that you didn't like about it or how did you feel about the whole friendly fire debacle in the comments i looked at it and i look, actually looked at some threads on the, like the official forums and it does go kind of back and forth there personally i agree that there probably should be some of it because it's like again taking world of tanks as an example you can't just shoot your allies you know and if they, even if they're if you're like this with your tank you're winding up on somebody and an ally charges in front of you and you shoot him you know kaboom know, whose fault well, whose fault was it yours or his i don't know <laughs> you so ran I, I, into my bullet that's your yeah, fault exactly. you ran into my <laughs> tank shell so i i get that there probably should be some i just think the penalties for it are really harsh uh post game because it can abs it can absolutely destroy your your score and the amount of currency you get from it. It's like it's almost enough to encourage me not to play with with ranged units. And to some extent, ranged are pretty powerful because they don't have any limited ammunition like they do in a real Total War game. So I can see a need to balance them to try to make try to make your skill better at them. And I, I've seen less friendly fire penalties as I advance up in rank from people gaining more experience with the game overall or with their you know, or with the ranged units themselves. So it does minimize a bit, but if you have just one, you know, one or two bad volleys when, again, like someone does like stupid charges right in front of you, it can really just nuke your score. I think they, if they wanted to balance archers, they could have maybe reduced their rate of fire instead. Because they do kind of pew, pew, pew. It's pretty fast, so. Zach, what's your whole take on the, the Total War arena? Are you uh, one of those RTS type, well, I, I guess it's kind of RTS-y. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, uh, fan, do you do you play those types of games? Are you familiar I, with the Total War series? Was the first look your first ever glance at it? What were your thoughts? Well, you know, I used to be an RTS fan until I took a StarCraft two to the knee and realized that. Oh my you're, god, like, that meme is still around. It is, unless you're basically like, and I hate these stereotype Korean, but using like 300 um, actions per minute, you're never gonna be a like a good player at it. And so whenever I see, oh, see, I kind of disagree with this type that. of game though. I think it's, Total it's War yeah. and I will say also is a bit of a slower pace than than yeah. that type of the, a traditional RTS, like a StarCraft II type thing. And I will say firsthand, I'm a Total War noob. I have not really checked it out just because I have sort of a bad taste in my mouth from my basically two years playing StarCraft II, and I'm just sort of done with the RTS um, genre as a whole. But I probably will check it out since the one reason why I never really checked out most Total Wars in general was because I had to pay in to get into them. So I'll check it out, at least this one, if it's good. And Jason says it seems pretty decent. See, but... Overwatch? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if it was free, he would take a look at it. Yeah. And that's, yeah, well, and that's I... just the thing. I mean, I, I just need a, a low gate of entry in terms of how much I have to pay to get in to test uh, a brand new franchise that I've never really dabbled into. It's not a brand new franchise, but it's brand new to me. So, yeah, that's my we'll, take. We'll play together and you can run in front of my archers. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and I'll take, I'll take, I'll take arrows to the too. knee. There you go. <laughs> oh, God. Two in three minutes. Oh, this is going to be a long episode. <laughs> After the implied joke was ruined, um, <laughs> I don't. I like Total War. This probably after watching the first look and messing around with it a little bit, I don't think this is my cup of tea. Um, I can appreciate trying to open the Total War franchise to this type of massively multiplayer experience. Uh, I just don't feel like being such a Total War guy and, and enjoying those. It's it's a little bit of a yeah. I'm just gonna go play with the game that I bought. That I I just don't know what was the cash shop like. Do we have any details on that one yet, Jason? It was really pretty bare. I mean, I went over that. There were like a couple of 
colors you could apply. I don't know if it was to your uniform or to some sort of like banner or anything like that. And other than that, it was like, yeah, buy premium time. You could use gold to buy the silver, the in-game currency, or change your uh, your universal XP over to another type of XP. It's kind of like, again, like World of Tanks tends to have. And that was it. I mean, there was, or, or to buy uh, buy unique units, you know, like, again, like premium tanks, that sort of thing. So so kind of following established yeah pretty much generally pretty much accepted games. formulas for those types of games yeah, those were the, there were five tabs on, on there and those were the five well it sounds like it's doing its job then uh, as far as the cash shop goes you got it right <laughs> you've got to rate this one for us you got a five in jason's one through ten five is truly the average score yes um yes. you know a game that just is it does what it does well but there's nothing truly stupendous about it where are you putting Total War here uh, as its overall score? Given, well, given in it, like, given that it is in a beta condition. Well, g given that it is a Total War game, which I'm going to be biased towards anyway, because I like them, I'd probably say about an eight. Wow. I, I thought it was quite a bit of fun. I think it needs to tweak a few things to, to get it into, into shape. And yeah, that, that's again the fact that it was in beta is probably what keeps it from going up higher. And and you know, also because I also realize that despite you know my reasonable experience of that sort of thing, it's probably still going to be a game where the people with the great skill or who or whatever are going to be the ones who just crush me every time so I'm trying not to get too excited about it do total war veterans have a leg up from uh, yeah, from minute so. 1 is it noticeable well i think they do well it's tough to see in general because of other people because i don't know how skilled they are but the one thing that it doesn't have and again being in beta there's no tutorial whatsoever ah so you have to know that hey you know if the other guy charges his cavalry into my archers. That's bad. Right. If I, you know, I want to put my spearmen in position to uh, defend high terrain and that sort of thing. There are a lot of little Total War bits that I know about that helped me, uh, I think, quite a bit when I was playing that it wouldn't necessarily know. Any type of guidance on unit A is strong against unit B but weak against unit C? Not, none of that. Nothing at all. There are stats you can look at, but, you know, that doesn't really tell you. Like the paper, scissors, rock. I got I got to think that's something that's coming. I think so. They, I, they yeah. have to. I, I'm pretty sure like they just opened up beta, assuming Total War fans are going to come and check out the beta, so we don't have to have this ready yet. <laughs> <laughs> Zach, I'm not going to ask you to score it. it. I think you gave us our opinion. You know, yeah. if you're if it wasn't free, you wouldn't check it out. Since it's free, you may actually give it a little dabble. Um, I got to put this one at a, maybe a six for me. Uh, a seven. I'll go. I'll go seven. It does what it's supposed to do, and seven is my like ever average score, even though it's not the average. I know it's like the Game Informer thing. Don't question it. Just go with it. <laughs> seven is you know, okay. It does what it's supposed to do. We'll watch the cash shop. We'll watch the beta improvements, and maybe it'll go up or down from there. I don't see myself playing a lot of it. I like Total War, but I prefer the single player experience for that type of game. So I think I'll keep my gameplay offline. Uh, what else? Oh, uh, Tree of Savior. Tree of Savior, we talked a l very, very briefly about it on the last show. Just a couple new class videos and things from our friends at uh, Steparu, uh, over at uh, Steparu and uh, what is the, the other site? Invis, uh, I think is the name of it off the top of my head. Showed some class videos and we kind of gave a few opinions on that. But now we've had some ample time to take a look at it. Did a first look, was running classes up, uh, doing some leveling. Now granted, that period of beta they did double the experience so that people could test some higher end things so uh the experience gains that you see in the first look video probably don't represent actual launch i'd imagine they'll be tweaked a little bit but uh yeah it was double the normal experience rate i uh, gotta say loved it just put that out there right off the bat loved it I like the art style. I we've talked about it being very reminiscent for me of the Mana series way back when. So I'm very cool with the art style, the two and a half D perspective. Loved the loved their whole leveling of classes and opening up additional classes. You have four off the bat, uh, and you build a family, so you control more than one person later in the game. Uh, but you have four classes to choose from off the bat, and then when you rank those classes up, both your character and your class level independently of each other. Uh, kind of like if you're familiar with Wildstar doing their class and their uh, path leveling, two different leveling mechanics. When you rank up each class, it gives you a tree of a few different new classes you can choose from. So if you're a swordsman, you can 
opt to become a second circle swordsman and it will up the abilities you already have and maybe give you a new ability or two or you could totally take it into a different class and i was playing with the archer dps wise not the best i feel they, they need to fix that a little bit <clears throat> because i was uh, struggling a little bit with the archer and felt that i shouldn't have been as far as the dps count goes even the priest classes could out dps me at certain points so i think there's a, a little bit of tweaking to do there uh, i did not read any of the story now it is based on lithuanian mythology though so you may see some familiar things in in the art and in the story i'm staying away from lithuanian mythology. <laughs> that, that, that's everything i'm staying away from the story because this is something i'm going to play at launch and so i don't want to have to go through the same thing i'm doing with blade and soul i started skipping the hell out of the story because i know i'm going to play it when it launches and i don't want to burn out on that stuff uh, I like the, the leveling system, I love the content, the questing is run of the mill, which we expected. This game will become very grindy, uh, you have to know that going into it, it's just that type of game. You know that ARPG feel where it's, you may be grinding the same things for a while in certain aspects while you're leveling various classes. Zach, have you taken a, a look at the first look video? What do you think now that we've got some hands on time with it? Well, I actually had hands on time with it within, like, I think one of the first betas, uh, or alpha, rather. Um, and I, it was during a time where they didn't have a two times experience going, at least from, I didn't see any press release about it when I got my key. So it's kind of weird to hear you talk about how the game progresses nicely with two times experience. And it makes me wonder whether or not they are only doing it at a normal rate to sell more experience scrolls. Because the problem that I see with the game itself. Uh, I, I like the fact that it sort of feeds off that Ragnarok um, spiritual successor thing, uh, but I don't like the fact that even in early levels, I felt like I was grinding and not really having quests to do. And I know that a lot of people that expect to play this game, and I expect to play it, I found it to be fun, despite the fact that even at really early levels, I was having to grind as I was sort of progressing to the levels instead of sort of just skipping over things here and there or, you know, just completely not going out of my way to get more minions to pull in a pack to AOB them all down. It's, it's one of those things where it's a fun game. I really like the class progression in the sense that um, I started as an archer as well. Um, I think that I went ranger as a second class. That's what I did as well. And, and I didn't really have the issues that you did. I'm really wondering whether or not maybe you put your skills into something different than what I did. Um, but I had fairly easy you know, rate of progression in terms of like killing things. It was more so just experience wise is where I was having issues where I would have to like go like down a cave level or whatever and kill off like a bunch of mobs to get myself up to the next level to be at the level that everyone else that was in a party was at so that way I could kill the next boss I needed and, to kill. And that's maybe that's our difference. Were you partying an awful lot? No, I, I wasn't. Okay, because I, was, I played solo most of it, and I partied for one or two things, I think, during the bomb live stream. But yeah. uh, during solo play... This is definitely the type of game, by the way, if you're not familiar with it, where you can solo bosses. You, you yeah. definitely can, and I did on the yeah, Archer so in, in both videos. It takes time, long time. though. Uh, and a lot of kiting and a lot of surviving until that potion comes off cooldown. That type of gameplay, that traditional ARPG style gameplay. Because yeah. these are geared towards, they want you to party up. You can do it solo, great, fine, if you have the time and you want to do it. And it's, it is challenging, even at early levels, some of that stuff is challenging to do solo. Um, <clears throat> they want you to group up. Jason, watching the first look video, what do you think? Gosh, a game where you grind on early levels? I love that. Uh, I, I can tell. I can tell uh, that this is going to be one of your favorites. To be perfectly honest, though, I, you know, from what I've seen of the other videos, the other ones you're talking about that we did, and just, I, you know, I like the look of it, and I like the art style, whatever. It seems something, something I could get into, but I think I'd want to do it with a friend. Like, I couldn't imagine just solo grinding my way through this stuff. I look at the group stuff. That looks like a lot of fun, even if you have to grind for a little while to get there. Uh, you know, and if I had a friend, someone to do it along with, then it's something I can get into. I just don't see myself as wanting to just get up there for the sake of getting up there by myself. And, you know? I, yeah, I can agree there. I, I can agree this would be definitely something that I would enjoy more with a, a friend that we played on, like, you know, every Tuesday night we'll play an hour or two, that type of thing. Uh, absolutely. It is fun alone. I can see how it would become very tedious alone 
as you w make your way and the experience chunks that you need become bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Uh, so I, I can go with there. Zach, what would you rate this bad boy now? Well, I got to ask you one thing really yeah, quick. Yeah, go for it. Go for it. It's something that I really had a huge pet peeve with in the um, alpha close bay. I forget exactly what it was, like I said. Um, key bindings. Mm -hmm. Did they add the option for key bindings in the main menu yet? Yes. Because before you had to go in the I&I. &I. Okay, thank God. All right, so with that considered, because that was one of my bigger pet peeves with the game, I didn't want to go digging through my I&I &I files to fix my freaking hotkeys. Um, I would have to give it probably a 7.5. I, I, I enjoyed it, despite the fact that I feel like if they keep that two times experience thing as the normal rate, I think the game will be a lot better because the experience rate that I was doing, it's fine, I guess, for that style of game and people enjoyed it. But I just look at the many levels we're going to go through because I think the game has like, what, 200 levels or something like that? 180? Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it's a lot. Yeah, and then it has over 50 classes. So I was having... I felt like I was grinding like hardcore at like level 15 or 17 or something like that. Like I can't imagine being over 100 at that rate. So I don't know. I it's I, really I should I should I should um, clear up my answer to that question. The they are not the key binding stuff is not inside the game in the beta, but IMC has okay. confirmed that it will be there prior to launch. Okay, that makes sense. So yeah. uh, just to be clear in case somebody comments on me, it's not there. It's not there yet, but IMC has confirmed that it would be there before lunch. Yeah, so as long as they don't pull the whole, oh, we're going to decrease the rate of experience so we could sell a bunch of experience scrolls thing, which some games do. Then I'm no. Good, but... Games <laughs> don't do that. We might talk <laughs> about one of those companies in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's like I said, a 7.5. I'm anticipating it. So Yeah, I'm going to give it uh, an 8.5. I'm going to give it an 8.5. Wow. Uh, I'm enjoying it. I, I will bump that up to a 9 once I'm able to play some more without the double experience and get a feel for what I can expect when the game launches. There's a still a few little buggy things. Obviously, it's, it is in beta, but... Um, there was nothing game destroying or anything. It was uh, basically like the one, the one thing I saw the most of was text placeholders where there was some <laughs> random string of text. They hadn't localized that particular line yet. And so it was yeah. just odd letters and characters. Um, but yeah, I'm going to give it an 8.5 at this time with the, the option to go up to a 9 once I start playing the official launch version without any experience modifiers. Jason, not going to ask you to rate this one. Not going to ask you to rate this one. But... Moving on, let us know, by the way, guys and gals of the internet, what you think of Total War Arena and Tree of Savior in the comments below. Jason, apparently, uh, there's a company that doesn't want a nickel and dime free-to-play <laughs> oh, players. No, uh, they want to do the right thing, mm -hmm. make compelling game experiences that make you want to buy things and not force you into buying things and sure. nickel and diming you. And that company, believe it or not, drumroll, brrr, is Electronic Arts. Your friend and mine, Electronic Arts. What? What, what is this all about? Because the phrase nickel and dime doesn't even apply to me. It's like, we don't want a dollar, five dollar you when I think of, when I think of Electronic Arts. So what, what is going on? Where do these comments come from? Yeah, that's what the uh, CFO of EA, uh, Blake Jorgensen, said at a uh, game conference a couple weeks ago. He said... Uh, our game teams are all thinking through what's the engagement model to keep the consumer to really entertain the consumer for a long period of time. When you think about that, it's not really the economics. The economics come afterwards. There might be multiple models of ways to engage people. And then he uses Madden Ultimate Team as an example, oh, saying, you know, this is God. Gonna be, you know, people used to play Madden and they'd stop at the end of the football season and move on. This lets them, this lets us engage them year round. And man, if you knew the, I mean, the, the Madden Ultimate Team, you get to have players, you know, real NFL players. Now, you'll get common versions of players, like, say, Adrian Peterson, who's a really good player, and he's rated, I don't know, like an 85 or something. You want the super rare Adrian Peterson? You're going to need about 20 million packs to get him. The one that's rated 99? Yeah, you need about 20 yeah. million packs to get him. But you can still have crappy Adrian Peterson, no problem. So it's like... Now, but hey, it keeps us engaged. I, I do. We do need to kind of <laughs> keep you engaged, Lauren. We do kind of need to to put this in a, a context a little bit. Was this in response, or was this uh, strictly about their free to play business, or was he speaking generally as a whole? You know, EA, EA doesn't want to do this in general because 
I can't believe that he says something like that on the Eve slash post Star Wars Battlefront launch, for example. <laughs> yep. I mean, that is staggeringly stupid uh, comment to make when you've just released a $60 product with a $60 season pass and is generally being panned because a lot of that season pass content really should be in the game now. Uh, and basically what you're getting for it. And selling things like the best blaster available in the game right now, the one you get, well, not the best, but up there, the last one you get if you go through and, and farm everything up in-game is the blaster they gave you for 10 extra dollars with the digital, or with the uh, collector's thing. I mean, just this is a staggeringly stupid thing to say when you have something like that right there and multiple, I'm sure we could go for the next 45 minutes citing <laughs> bad EA marketing examples. Uh, is this about their business as a whole? Was he speaking about free-to-play in particular? Or just, it didn't really specify? It seems like he's talking about microtransactions most. I got the original article pulled up here. Um, he, says, he talks about mobile sometimes. He says, uh, let's see. Oh, yeah, because they're, they're well known for not nickel and diming you on their mobile <laughs> stuff. <laughs> So we're looking at new models of ways to alleviate some of that fatigue, talking about consumer fatigue, about getting nickel and dime. Uh, some of those might come in the form of subscription style, but some of them might come in different ways to play games over time, so you don't feel like you're always getting nickel and dimed. Does anybody remember the whole thing about uh, Dungeon Keeper? <laughs> Speaking of EA's mobile stuff? <laughs> I mean... It, uh, well, I could speak from this from a different perspective than you guys. I actually own stocks in EA, right? And so, so I, I bought it. Yeah. I so he's like, buy the season buy. pass, baby. No, I, I don't support their business practice. But what I can tell you, from they make the money. Stock since thirty-five dollars per share, and it's now up to seventy. It yeah. fucking works. It's, it really, really works well. That, that's and awesome. so that's what I'm wondering. Yeah, so what I'm wondering, because what Jason said about Madden is exactly sort of what I think they're doing. They're essentially trying to create a hierarchy in their player base and the mentality of players, where if you own it, said emotes or you own said DLC, you're sort of a premium player that is um, going to be held in higher regard. It's kind of like why games in particular like Madden put in gambling type practices, like the packs, for example, where you can purchase thousands of packs and maybe get a rare and it'll you know maybe sort of flash on the screen to make you think you got a rare but you probably didn't but because it flashed you might feel incentivized to try and try again and so it's it's something that i see with throughout the industry that a lot of a lot more games especially free to, free to play games and even now paid games are trying to do this which is disgusting to me are trying to put more sort of gambling oriented stuff like lock boxes um, cards like I could think of Dirty Bomb as a great example where they show that pre-reel of the the loadouts you're getting um, or might be able to get in the um, the lock boxes and then it like bypasses the best version of that and then goes to, like a bronze so it's like oh you almost had it please spend money to buy some more <laughs> even though it's just a pre-made video so EA does this beautifully they they basically are like oh we're the victims we're we're trying to make all these great games. Oh, we're not trying to nickel and dime you, and then they try and sell you a hundred dollar Battlefront because they decided to take away forty dollars of the content and wait till post launch. So it works. It works really well, and I don't think a lot of players are going to boycott <laughs> EA. Sword Tour is a great example of that in terms of nickel and diming. But it's one of those things where, as an investor, I'm like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I can't change everyone what else's is, minds. What is that so. sound? It's Oh, that's the sound of YouTube deciding it hates Zach Sharps. Um, <laughs> hey, I said it free to play weekly as well. So well, and that's kind of the other point, though, and you do bring it up nicely, is what the hell can we do about it? I mean, we always talk about you know, vote with your wallet, vote with your wallet, vote yeah. with your wallet, but then you have a company as big and in their hands in all the IPs you actually would like to take part in and play and experience, and they've done this time and time again. We've seen smaller companies that pay for mistakes similar, like, uh, similar to the Battlefront-type mistake by going under. You know, we've seen that over the last 10 years as we've 
kept track of all these different companies and publishing houses and everything. EA has made this mistake, and then the Battlefield shit, and then the SimCity stuff, and, I mean, the list just goes on and on and on about things players don't like, they don't want to pay for, they feel like they're getting ripped off, and EA is still raking in the money hand over fist. Yes, they do release some good titles that don't have these problems. Every time EA releases one that makes a mistake, it is a headline everywhere. I get it. You don't hear about the two that had no problems and were well-received, but you hear about the, the three over the course of a period of time. But this many missteps, they got to pay for it in some regards, but everybody just keeps buying and buying and buying. I don't, I don't know what else to do. I haven't bought Battlefront. Sim specifically because I just won't, even though I really, really wanted to. I really, really wanted to. But there's not enough. There's not enough of me's and Zach's that are willing to say, you know what, I'm going to, no, I'm going to take a $60 pass or a $110 pass on this one, yeah. and, and and we'll see what happens. You know, so I, I, I remember when I was when I was doing stuff for, for Game Breaker, and I talked to Gary once about how, oh, should we do this article on, you know, something on Madden? And he was like, no, because the people who buy Madden they, they're going to buy the same thing every year. They don't give a damn. They don't look at all the news and everything. It won't get any hits. I sort of feel that same way. With, with you know, yeah. a lot of with Madden or with Star Wars, or even stuff that's a little, a little more, not quite as mass, like SimCity. You know, that's, you know, not quite as huge as Star Wars or NFL or whatever. There are people who they're going to buy the next thing. It doesn't matter what it does. They will pay sixty dollars and then another eighty dollars for the whatever pass because they want that shit. Period. And like you said, like you said, there are fewer people like you or Zach or I who are going to be discerning about that stuff and say, "Well, no, EA sucks. I'm not going to do it." As opposed to all the people who are like, "Ooh, Star Wars, give me." That, that's it. That, that's the end yeah, of it. I really wanted to because of Star yeah. Wars. I mean, that, that's yeah. I'm a huge Star Wars nut, but I the just is, just couldn't do it. Go ahead, Zach. The th the thing is too with um, EA games, and someone said it beautifully on Twitter at one point. If Fallout 4 released, uh, or, or if a game like from EA released in the state that Fallout 4 released in, which Fallout 4 was extremely buggy, oh, and yeah. frame rate issues across all platforms, it was a disaster. But because it was Fallout, everyone praised it. But if EA released a game in the similar quality, everyone would be going mad. There would be sites made specifically to bash on EA. And so I feel like some people just need to detach themselves from these companies that are only exist to make money. Because if Bethesda truly cared, they would be fully communicating, our game has bugs, we're going to fix it. Or just like with EA, we have an issue, we're going to fix it. Instead of just maybe throwing out an article here and there to try and bring back consumer confidence in said product, which is all EA is trying to do. That's all they've been doing for the past like two years, ever since the whole Mass Effect 3 and then a bunch of other issues that sort of trickled in after that. They're trying to, to sort of bring up your confidence in them to try not nickel and dime you when they're actually just going to do the same thing that they've been doing for years on end, which is nickel and dime. It is incredibly so, bold, though, for your CFO, CEO, I, I don't remember the, the CFO. CFO, to make a comment like that. <laughs> <laughs> it is incredibly bold when you because have again, a, you know, when so you even have a current track record of still doing it. Yeah, that's a, a that's a bold terrible, thing to say. Stink, no we know you're ripping us off. Just stop saying you're not. <laughs> 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 that's what I have the beef with. <laughs> All right. Uh, real quick, I do want to touch on a topic. Zach, I, Jason, I know you won't have too much to say on this one, probably. Speaking of EA, I think we would be remiss, Zach, if we didn't talk about Bioware nerfing the hell out of companions and then buffing them a little bit uh, and the whole fiasco that went down on the forums there. If you don't know, I'll give you the 30,000-foot version. When Knights of the Fallen Empire launched, your companions were buffed to hell and back. They were mighty. There was, there was uh, with one or two exceptions, ironically, the exceptions were the ones you had to pay for. But um, <laughs> we'll set that aside. Nickel and dime. Uh, we'll set that aside for a second. Most of your companions were buffed out the ass and you could do heroic twos no problem by yourself with your companion i was even running the star fortresses on heroic and making it to almost the last boss with just my companion and i um i completed them and that was the first time i ever ran one so i had no idea what i was doing and what the pools were going to look like and i made it just shy of the first boss so with another run or two i have no doubt that i would have been able to strategically do some certain things sure, to complete yeah. them then they nerfed the shit out of them. 
to the point where you couldn't do heroic twos, let alone the Star Fortresses, uh, by yourself. Now they've buffed them a little bit, but not quite to the extent that they were originally were. And I don't think anybody likes any of this right now. <laughs> the forums are a nightmare with this. Yeah, I didn't hear anything on the forums about them needing to nerf it. Like, I heard people like, why am I being able to go AFK for like 30 minutes and my companion heal me up and I don't even move an inch on my health bar? Like, people were like that, but they weren't like, please nerf this. Like, I, I, didn't, I don't think I saw anyone talk about that. Because I think a lot of people were enjoying the fact that if they wanted to group, they, they easily could. But if they didn't want to group and they wanted to do most of the content within Knights, or actually rather all of the content within Knights of the Fallen Empire by themselves, they were able to do it just fine. And so when I heard that they initially nerfed it, and I heard that they nerfed it basically to the ground, which happens with a lot of games. I mean, you could look at most of Blizzard's games, they'll nerf everything to the ground and then sort of buff it up over time. Uh, it's one of those things where I was like, okay, it's obviously going to be broken. I'm not even going to hop into Sword Tour, even my su my subs running, because I just don't want to deal with it. I don't want to have to party up when I don't want to. Um, but now that I hear that they buffed it back, I'll probably hop in today to test it out. But I knew it was eventually probably coming. I just don't know if there was even a need for it within the community. Like, did you see anyone complain about it? I, I saw a post. I, mean, I looked at some of the forums. I saw people saying afterward, after it had been done, they said, yeah, we knew that it needed to be nerfed a little bit, but this is too much. I saw some of that. So. Yeah, yeah. there definitely was a feeling of overpower. When, when the expansion launched and I was playing it, I mean, I was never in danger of dying with the exception of doing things I knew had a high probability of killing me just to yeah. see if I could get killed. Uh, the Star Fortress, the, the heroic version, uh, I think it was uh, Tatooine was the one that I was doing. Um, the very first time was, I don't think I should be able to make it through this. Let's go see if I can with my companion and almost making it through it. So there was definitely a feeling of overpowered uh, and I expected a little bit of nerf, but I mean, they you're right. I mean, they got nerfed into the ground and then buffed back a little bit. Uh, I, such a drastic change. I, I just don't know. It's not like they couldn't see it coming. Uh, and then not not only that, to kind of do it the way they did it, which was not really tell anybody they were going to do it until yeah. like a day or two before. And yeah. Oh, well. Considering, considering the, the feedback regarding the companions was not really that drastic. Okay, oh, my God, it's so overpowered. Like, everyone thought that in their head, but they weren't really complaining about it. Well, that's because uh, no, nobody's going to say it. it is, uh, exactly. <laughs> and so, you know, people don't nobody's complain about be, it. My character's OP. I ain't saying a word. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if people don't complain about that much and pretty much no one has an issue with it, does it really need to be changed? And that's really the moral of the story here, especially since they have a lot of other issues they need to worry about, such as the fact that Odessin is still a laggy piece of crap. Yeah. Like, I, I logged in the other day, and I tried to post an auction. It literally took about three minutes for the auction to post. I just could not get the post. And I have that issue just across their servers to begin with, and it only happened ever since the launch of the expansion. It happened during Revan as well. It'll fix itself within a few months. But they need to worry about having stronger servers before they go nerfing things that no one is complaining about. Like, it's just, it's weird. Let us know what you thought of the whole nerf buff, nerf buff of the companions in the comments below. We're running a little late. Let's go do the weekly bombs. I'm going to go first. A big A-bomb to Firefall and Red 5 Studios and the whole debacle right now behind that game. Uh, well, the debacle that's been going on for the last year plus right now that has culminated in the layoff of about 40 employees and a game that just really doesn't have a home or a true direction anymore. And it's, it's sad because there was a time a few years ago that I think we looked at Firefall as a really, really great opportunity for a fantastic free-to-play game. And it's just lost its direction so many times and... The employees Never are being had a direction. Yeah, their employees are being yeah. asked to do things. Every three months, whenever Mark Kern went through a mood swing. <laughs> their yeah. employees now are unfortunately being asked to do things that I don't think any team can reasonably do in the time period that they want it done. So, uh, we obviously hope that everybody laid off gets a, a job very very quickly. Go ahead, Jason. We should have just kept Kern around to fundraise and do nothing else. You can do that. <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. Uh, speaking of losing your focus, I'm going to give. I'm giving sort of an A bomb right now to Guild Wars 2 because what they had, they had a thing about uh, Colin Johansson got on the 
got on Reddit, talked about, you know, tried to talk about what they were trying to do with esports. And I'm just like, God, esports, come on, man. Just stop chasing that. Now, he he doesn't say, he says, we're not trying to be League of Legends or anything. He says that, you know, it's really more of a marketing expense, that it gets people interested in the game with all their streaming and whatever. So I'm sort of okay with that. So it doesn't take up a whole lot of dev time. It doesn't take up a whole lot of resources and money, whatever. But I just don't know. I, again, it, to me, it's sort of like that. I just don't see like that's what they do well. The PvP in Guild Wars 2 is all right. They have their things, and I just, I just kind of wonder if it's bigger, it's smaller than what they make it out to be. Like with all the the marketing that goes into pro leagues and whatever, and so on and so forth that they just see it's always seemed like they want it to be a big thing now colin saying this means that maybe it's not but then why are you doing it? is it really that big of a marketing expense is it really bringing a marketing effort does it really bring that many more people into the game i i don't know it's it just seems like an odd duck compared to everything else guild wars 2 does zach do a bombs can you bring us back with some positivity brother yeah, I got a dub bomb to Albion Online for doing alphas, betas, and just founders packs in general correct. Because we see a lot of the times where a game like Firefall will come out with founders packs or you know some sort of Kickstarter, and they'll do a long alpha with no direction, zero leadership, and it's kind of funny that you gave a bomb to Firefall for basically having no leadership. So I mentioned that a while back, and I got flamed for it. Go figure. Um, and, but it's one of those things where I, I look at what Sandbox Interactive is doing with Albion and just from going from the alpha, the winter alpha that I played to now closed beta, it's night and day different. You can see that they polished the game even though it was already pretty much polished to begin with um, in the sense that there wasn't bugs or FPS issues. But they added in a bunch of things that needed to be added in, such as like sort of quests. Uh, they fine-tune sort of how you build up cities. They fine-tune the introduction to the game. They fine-tune a lot of different things that needed to be done, and they did it effectively while still sort of following through with their roadmap to launch. And we don't see that often anymore. We see a lot of games like EverQuest Next sort of sit in whatever phase it's in now um, forever, and we also with basically no path to the finish line saw everquest landmark firefall basically every a lot of games out there do this and i don't think that games like albion get enough praise for actually following their plan and having leadership so definitely the bomb to them it seems like everquest next just kind of went away like <laughs> i don't know i'm gonna have to go check out the site it's been a site that i haven't visited in a while and heard much uh, the, about the one thing that i'll give them credit for is we used to go on about how much daybreak was just like pr this pr that get into the h1z1 thing and the land, landmark and so on and we're like okay but are you actually making the game yeah but look at our pr for this mm -hmm. so now they've been kind of quiet so i kind of take that as almost a good sign <laughs> that they're actually working out the game instead of trying to hype them up and sell the early access package uh from the viewers x forever says da bomb the magic man for making the quote of the year quote heroes of the storm would be my feces end quote magic man 2015 Go watch the last episode if you need context. <laughs> Go ahead, Jason. Okay. Uh, Elusive X Treasure says, The bond to the kind player who passed Chogall to my husband in Heroes of the Storm. Always happy to see friendly, helpful community members. What now, MOBA? Really? Hmm. Who are willing to do something, even if it isn't entirely for their benefit. And a second to bomb to my husband, since the whole reason he wanted Chogall was because I wanted a second warrior to play, and I'm not crazy about any other options. Side note, my husband is better than me with reaction time and strategy in nearly every game we play, including physical card games. So him trusting me to be controlling our movement because, as he put it, I'm better at getting the hell out of there is a big compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers to being great at running the heck away. P.S. Dance on, Jason. Dance on. You know, nobody asked to see me dance naked. So. Thank God. Thank <laughs> God. Go ahead, Zach. UDK says, uh, UDK Facey says, um, 50 gold and Terra is nothing like two top-level dailies. Ah, in response to our question last week to some viewers about the auto res or instant res option inside dungeons coming soon uh, Arsenio Allison also types in on the same topic 50 gold in Terra is pocket change gold is super inflated due to the auction house you could sell things you wouldn't even shut up dog that you uh, Arsenio Allison did not tell my dog to shut up I'm telling my dog you could sell things you wouldn't even sell items worth almost nothing in other games for a lot of money and most people don't like farming so they'd rather buy crafting materials and farming farming it since they have so much gold alright well that's good news then for the whole res thing you stop that Zach 
<laughs> Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Carino PT says, want to give a dub bomb to start to Star Wars: The Old Republic. Having a lot of fun with the game lately. I finally understand what Magic Man always says: if you play Sorter, you have to subscribe. Yep. Yes, it's, sir. It's yeah. not even a debate. Go ahead, Zach. But they don't Ray make zero. Don't worry. <laughs> Ray zero one zero one says, from last week's show regarding level progression, one of my favorite things about my go-to ARPG Path of Exile is a sense of progression that comes from leveling. While I hate playing through the story three times per character the sense of seeing what one little passive point makes is huge i just can't imagine poe or other games like it being even remotely fun without leveling aspects same goes for mmorpgs for that matter seeing the sense of progression that comes with finally reaching a normal goal such as x or y level is a great and fundamental experience for most mmo players that's, that's nominal goal just so the point is clear for anybody listening there sorry yeah um, take for example um, Diablo 3 where the objective form of progression shifted from leveling to gear all it ended up doing is building a shallow experience in the end they decided to introduce paragon levels and then change that as well to scale indefinitely my main reason I quit Guild Wars 2 was I never felt like I was progressing at all in the game and it always felt like a grind going back from a level to um, a no low word. where a, what, yeah no whatever so level so it should always feel rewarding not more of the same all this encourages is the monotonous grind centric gameplay right, i have to agree my, with them but here's gonna be my counter to it i hear him talking about path of exile a little about diablo 3 i bet he plays those solo and the solo game and a single player game vertical progression is just fine you have to progress and get you know more stuff if you yeah. want to actually try to match up with other people though it's a barrier that, i think of I think of really why I play World of Warcraft, though. Like, even though I, I've always denounced it as a game that's sort of same old, same old, I go back every expansion because I like the quest through the zones. And I don't know Hello. why that is, alone or with a party. Depends on if my friends are on during launch, like I usually am. So it's it's one of those things where I understand it's a barrier to entry, and I fully understand why where people come from when they say that. But I still like it. I, oh, I sure, don't know sure. why. So I see where he's coming from. Avocado Popurului. <laughs> I butchered that, sorry. Jason should do the first looks. He's better than you, Mike, in speech and explains better. You're a pessimist. Wow. That's oh, ironic. Sure sure <laughs> You're good at creating events and managing the deal. When you do the cast, insert some videos while you talk. If you talk about Terra, show on one side of the video some gameplay with that game. Let me address the second point first. We used to do exactly that, and the uh, the problem with that is if we talk about a game that just came out last week and we did a first look last week and we use that video, great, no problem. Nobody complains. They, they love it. <clears throat> When we talk about League of Legends, and I'm showing footage that we have readily available that is ours, so that we don't get dinged by other YouTube channels and stuff like that, then we take a lot of flack because the League of Legends footage is three years old, or the Smite footage is two years old, and that's all that happens in the comments. So it's just easier not to show gameplay. Uh, Jason, you should do all the first looks. I I'm a pessimist, so... And you explain better. That's probably because he gets to do first looks for games that he actually wants to fucking play. Yeah, yeah. although that might change this week. We'll see about the thing I might be working on. Right? Yeah. He's like, hey, uh, Total War. I'm like, hey, uh, Jason, Total War is ready. You want to do the first look on that or should I? Oh, no, definitely. I'll get it. I'll get it. Well, you realize if you take Total War, I'm stuck with fucking World of Fishing. <laughs> Uh, let me just. Okay, you can have World of Fishing. Let me just sound so happy about playing World of Fishing. <laughs> Question of the week last week. Let's chat MOBAs. How would you change up the typical MOBA formula and spice up the genre? Deathlock says, I would make a MOBA where you had to create a character from scratch rather than choose from pre-owned characters. As far as abilities go, the D go the DCUO route. Uh, I would do away with the whole top-down point-and-click to move. That's always been the one thing that steered me away from the genre. So Deathlock kind of digs maybe Smite's perspective, the whole third-person yeah. thing. I kind of like that idea, though, where you create the champions. That's kind of it. I mean, you'd have to map that out and think about what progression would look like, which maybe Jason, uh, maybe that that's a piece for you, Jason, is yeah. MOBA progression where you get your own character. Uh, go ahead and take the next one, sir. All right, Nilrem5669 says, Good question, Magic Man. The one thing I would change about MOBAs isn't really a change. Rather, add more content. 
Many MOBAs suffer from lack of different maps to play on, and almost all suffer from different game modes. If we could stay right now, most mobile players are a type of team deathmatch. Okay. End sentence. I would like there to be MOBAs with different modes, like capture the flag, protect an object, or even just change it up and have one side be pure defensive and another pure offense, and you have a timer to state how long to defend your base. Then you would win by protecting your base and not do offense. I like the idea, but as I found, I loved playing Dominion in League of Legends. I prefer that to the basic Summoner's Rift game. But apparently everybody just shits on Dominion. Says so it's crappy, and even when last time I logged in, I got matched up with nine bots. I couldn't find people. So... Yeah. Go ahead, Zach. It, it's working. Sorry. It's working for them to have one game mode. It's funny. Yeah, uh, Sky Shadow says, Why who does someone change the MOBA formula? It's perfect. No reason to change it. To be clear, I am Ben Sarcastic. Yes, I play MOBA, so I could see that all MOBAs have the same things, but the big innovation adds from something to nothing. But to take the formula, take the formula fun or at less dumb... I'd who'd make that it has four teams of three players with one team having only O type of hero. He's not even trying to clean this up. I'm not trying <laughs> No, he's I, not. I, <laughs> <laughs> do you, do you want me to take this one and, I, and you can do Mega 17? <laughs> it's, yeah, like one support team, one assassin, one warrior tank, and all are fighting until one team is standing. You lose items, level, and gold on death. Oh my the only god, people would be pissed. In the middle of the map. All teams have to buy from the same place and friendly fires on. That would, that would be the king of MOBAs. Uh, Sky Shadow, I, I don't know if you know this, but uh, games that are full loot, which is basically sort of what you're implying in a sense, that basically people will lose items, they're not really the most popular games. Oh my god, I'd be so game. pissed playing this game. I, I would too, but I, you know I would love it. I, I love full loot. Games, I, I might like it, but, but oh my god, love just it for that first week and then you'd stop. well, yeah, that's the problem yeah. because it would combine how bad I am with actual penalty. And well, not only not only that, but if you think about a MOBA and how it progresses, the other team would snowball. Like if they wipe you once and they remove all your items, it's GG. Oh it's no, you you can that. put in things that that would help that. I mean, just look at what Paladins does with the whole siege engine tank spawning. And the time that it takes you to spawn it, if your team is getting shelled and is already down two gates, there are things you can do to balance that stuff out. Uh, Mega17 says, for question of the week, besides using an open world instance as a social hub, I would change the term MOBA. It is a term peddled by Riot Games and doesn't distinguish the game type. That was heard this religious battle before. That was MOBA, I believe, was around a. No, it, it was for from, from the other people I've heard. It was coined by Riot. Was it? Well, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I guess I'm trying to tie it to Dota, just but maybe that's just well, because I understand Dota, Dota to, to be a MOBA, and I'm just linking yeah. the terms. Uh, going by the words of the acronym, Super Smash Brothers and Overwatch count as MOBAs, which is total incongruity. To me, good word. Uh, to me, the core formula is short sessions of RPG progression through leveling, grinding, PvP, and siege. Adding RTS elements or features from other games doesn't change that. An actual change to the formula would just land us with an older game type or produce a new one. Question of the week this week. What single player or offline game world game would you love to see an MMO set in? And I think we all have our personal favorites here. And uh, gee, I wonder how many times people are gonna say Fallout. Put your question or your answers to the question of the week below. Don't forget your weekly bombs. Dub bomb for something good, A bomb for something bad. Uh, and we'll put your comments on next week's show. And if you want to chime in on anything we talked about, give your reviews, of course, do that as well. Jason, until then, where can everybody find you, sir? Yeah, Fallout, because we all wanted that. All the scrolls online have them. Look how that happened. Anyway. <laughs> well, and then the repopulation is now having issues. That was like the closest we were going to get, and now it's having issues with the whole engine right now. Twitter at Winter and Fall. <laughs> Just keeping it short. No, no Etsy to talk about? Nah, nah. Let's get back to that. Mr. Zach Sharps. Uh, this is at Zach Sharps on Twitter. I'll keep it simple, too, because I always post everything on Twitter anyhow, so makes it easy. Oh, see, now you make me look like an asshole because I have to talk for a little while because I've got to cover we're some we're music still here still uh, until it <laughs> chimes in. I'm Mike Byrne, a.k.a. Magic Man. You can follow me at Twitter, Magic Man 1, M-A-G-I-C-K-M-A-N-N-1, -N or come over to MMOBomb.com, check out everything free and all the giveaways. Until next time, gang, stay safe.
and we'll see you on the servers. I'm <laughs> sorry.